Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, immigration is our topic, and I'm glad to host uh, this uh, interesting, I, I think, uh, topic in the next uh, half an hour with uh, two people that uh, are experts on immigration. Uh, Notis Mitarakis, the Minister of Immigration and Asylum. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mitarakis. Good morning, Mr. Bathanasiu. And uh, Mr. Fabrice Lezeri, Executive Director of Frontex. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lezeri, for uh, our contribution to our discussion. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation. New realities is the topic of uh, the Delphi Forum, and uh, we are in front of new realities in many fronts. Geopolitically, the war in Ukraine produced new challenges, uh, not only uh, economically, uh, geopolitically, but uh, in terms of uh, migration as well. Uh, migration in Greece did not produce headlines for the next, for the last few years, until the war in Ukraine came, and now we have new realities. Uh, I will start, Mr. Mitarek, with the war in Ukraine uh, after the decisions of the Home Affairs Council uh, of the European Union. The Greek government, along with the other uh, Europeans, uh, took some initiative providing residence and work permit to the uh, people in Ukraine. Is it enough? And what is the plan B if the war continues? First of all, on the 4th of March, uh, the Council of the European Union took a historic decision to activate a directive of 2001 never used before, offering automatic recognition as a displaced person of anyone of Ukrainian nationality leaving Ukraine after the 24th of February. The second thing that was very important in this historical decision is that we have abolished what we call the Dublin regulation with regard to arrivals from Ukraine. Officially, the EU now has no internal borders for displaced people from Ukraine. They can arrive and settle in any EU country. Greece was probably the first country in the European Union to activate in the national legislation uh, a few minutes after the publication of the Council decision, our scheme. We have already received 17,000 people from Ukraine. We issue uh, a Greek identity card for 12 months, a displaced person identity card with a tax number and social security number, giving them access to the job market, giving them access to health care, and providing food and shelter to those that need. I think uh, this historical decision sets a precedent for the debate we now have in Europe for the new pact on migration and asylum. We can't say on the one hand that if you are Ukrainian, there are no internal borders, but if you are not Ukrainian, then they are. This will be a strong contradiction, and that will not be in line with European values. And I think that's a topic we will raise in the Council in June, and I think it will become a basic point of discussion, not only from the Member States, but also the actors involved in migration. I had this discussion also in Doha a few weeks ago with the High Commissioner of the UNHCR, uh, which I raised the issue that we cannot have two different policies in Europe for people that are recognized as refugees. Uh, Mr. Lesteri, what, uh, what are the challenges uh, from people coming from Ukraine? There, we have a different situation here. That uh, We have uh, new aspects politically, geopolitically. It's, it, your, your job is different as well. Yes, of course, the, the job of border guards uh, is different. Um, while Frontex was requested by Romania, uh, also Slovakia, to uh, increase uh, their operations. So we are supporting uh, with uh, 150 border guards in Romania. And we also have now a deployment in Moldova, which is a third country, but uh, has a status agreement with the European Union. So basically, at the borders to Ukraine, our job is to support in the uh, processing of the people fleeing the war uh, in order to speed up the, the crossing so that we don't have bottlenecks uh, on entry into the European Union and so that we can also support with uh, document checks, uh, security checks, because of course uh, all these people are fleeing the war, so there is no question that these are refugees or people, let's say, in need of international protection. But uh, they are uh, also in this region, um, development of possible uh, uh, criminality uh, patterns, uh, such as, for example, uh, weapons trafficking. So this is something which is not uh, really now uh, happening, but this is something that one can expect uh, because of the war in Ukraine. And we have the experience also of the, the, the war in, in Yugoslavia 20 years, 30 years ago. And the, in the aftermath of the peace, there was uh, a lot of weapons. 
So that's the reason why we also have to make sure um, that traffickers are not um, becoming more and more active and trying to traffic. First, they're trying to, to traffic human beings because they, they want also to, to use this, um, the fact that some people fleeing uh, from Ukraine don't know that they have rights in the European Union. And we also help um, in the, the voluntary humanitarian return of people who are not Ukrainians and don't intend to seek for asylum, but they just want to go back home in their country. For example, Tajikistan uh, workers uh, that wanted to, to go back from Poland to Tajikistan. This is just an example. Mm -hmm. The trafficking and uh, the traffickers, uh, uh, did you detect any incidents, a lot of incidents in Europe uh, from traffickers? Have you dealt with these uh, kind of incidents? Well, I, for, for the time being, what, what we see is that there are uh, people um, trying to, to, to be close to the, the migrant reception centers to, to try to, to trap, let's say, vulnerable person uh, because there are many women with children um, and they don't know that they, they, they have legal job opportunities in the, in the EU. So this is, uh, in a sense, fighting against possible criminals but also helping a vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mitarikis, you mentioned it. Uh, Greece and the European Union uh, is facing criticism about double standards mm -hmm. uh, from people having different standards from people from the broader Middle East and Africa and different standards from uh, people in Ukraine. Uh, what is your view? Is it a fair criticism? From the national point of view, we do not have double standards. Any person which is eligible for international protection receives international protection and receives the similar level of benefits. And people that are recognized as refugees in Greece have the same access to the social welfare state that Greek nationals enjoy. So we don't have double standards. What it is a double standard now, and it's something that has risen since the 4th of March, so it's a completely new topic, it has to do with what some people call secondary movements. There are countries in the EU that find it find that people that are recognized as refugees should not be allowed to move within the European Union. We think that's not in line with what we should be. We should be a common European protection space. We're driven by the same values, by the same regulations. We're all signatories to the Geneva Convention. We all need to provide together a common protection space for those people seeking protection. But in the case of Greece, I have to say that from every 10 people crossing the borders, only three are recognized as refugees, seven are not. And I think the Europe has much to do still in achieving a framework of returns of those not entitled to international protection with safety and dignity to the countries of origin or the countries of transit. Frontex, we're working with Frontex on that front, on the returns. But I have to say and remind people that since 2020, March, Turkey is not abiding with the provisions of the EU-Turkey joint statement and is not accepting the returns of those that under the Greek national legislation, after having exhausted all legal uh, options, have been deemed not eligible for protection. And that's a big issue for, the Euro for Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, overall now, there is a lot of discussions uh, all these uh, 12 years since Frontex is present in Greece. Uh, what is the role of Frontex according to the Greek government? First of all, Frontex must implement international law and European law. Uh, it must protect our common borders in line with what the law says, the international treaties, the judgments from the European Court of Human Rights. It is clear that Frontex is a security force. It's not an NGO. They're not a welcoming committee. They're not there to organize reception. They're there to protect the borders. And that's why, if I understand correctly, Frontex is the only EU agency that is allowed to bear arms the, and the standing corp. And thirdly, what is very important is that Frontex is managed by the member states. It is the member states that hold 27 out of 29 seats at the board of uh, directors. So they work for the member states. That's the three things I understand to be Frontex role. Abide by international law, and European law, be a security force, and being managed and run for the benefit of member states. Mm -hmm. Now, are, are you, 
Now there is um, a discussion about renewing the, uh, the mandate of Frontex in 2023. Are you discussing uh, involving Frontex in other fronts of work, uh, uh, in the immigration policies, let's say the return operations? I think protecting the borders and returns are competencies that Frontex has. The key thing for Frontex is it needs to be efficient and it needs to provide for what they have been created the protection of the European borders. And that's what the member states have to judge Frontex for. Does it achieve fighting the smuggling networks? Let us be clear on the Greek position. We're fully in favor of a more open migration policy. And we're now working with a number of countries to open legal pathways for people to come to Europe, not through smugglers, but through visa schemes. We have been active in taking people with humanitarian visas like, for example, after the crisis in Kabul, we invited 100 female leaders from Afghanistan with their families. We're in favor of a, of a positive migration policy, but we're clearly against smugglers. We're against people transferring for a huge fee people from the safe country Turkey to the safe country Greece for them to move on to the European Union. It is interesting that most of the people that have arrived to Greece do not want to stay in Greece. So they are coming to Greece as a, a foothold to move further to the West. And that's asylum shopping. And I recall UNHCR clearly being against asylum shopping. We're also against asylum shopping. People should be helped to leave war zones and they should be offered protection at the first safe harbor. And in our case, Turkey clearly is the first safe harbor according to the members of the European Council with the 2016 joint statement. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rizzeri, give us a sense of uh, the work of Frontex in, in Greece uh, during the those 12 years in security, securing the uh, East uh, Mediterranean corridor. And uh, I want you to comment uh, what uh, Minister Mitaraki said about Turkey. Turkey doesn't implement the EU agreement. Well, when it comes to the readmission agreement, uh, it, it has been suspended uh, in 2020 uh, because of COVID. This was the uh, uh, reason uh, invoked by, by Turkey. Uh, more generally, the role of Frontex as the European Border and Coast Guard Agency is to support Greece, as other, other member states, in implementing the Schengen Border Code, implementing the European Border and Coast Guard regulation and other uh, applicable regulations uh, applicable to the borders. Um, we have, uh, let's say, three main areas. The, the first one is, of course, uh, to support member states to address uh, problems related to irregular migration. And this includes the return, so we support also Greece and other member states in returning uh, third country nationals to their country of origin. For example, last year uh, we returned 18,000 uh, third country nationals. Uh, there is another cluster of activities which is related um, to the fight against cross-border crime, which includes, uh, well, uh, fighting against trafficking in human beings, but other kind of trafficking, weapons trafficking, drugs trafficking, in particular uh, at land borders and, and sea borders, uh, stolen cars, well, different kind of uh, criminal uh, activities, which also includes a, a mandate to contribute to the prevention and detection of possible terrorist threat at the external borders on entry, but also on exit. And, and this is perhaps something which is less known, our role is also to harmonize uh, the, the practice and the standards, to develop new technologies, because the purpose of a border is to be crossed legally and to, to make sure that the security checks are performed in, in line with the law so that we can let people in and let people out while complying with the security standards, with the administrative uh, criteria. And of course, uh, we have to make sure that people in need of international protection can have access to international protection if they um, are, uh, let's say, if they come from a, a country where their life is threatened or if they might be uh, threatened uh, if they go back to, to some, some countries. But the, the role uh, is clearly to modernize the border management capacities. I would like to give the example of ETIAS, which is an entry-exit system which uh, is expected to enter into in practice next year. So ETIAS is a pre, uh, elec electronic pre-authorization uh, for 61 nationalities. So for legal travelers, and 
they will have to enroll before they reach the border. And when they reach the border, there will be a check in the database uh, where the, what is the status. So it looks like the ESTA in the US, and now the European Union will have this. And Frontex is building the EU central unit for ETIAS, which means that we are not simply a kind of fire brigade uh, stepping in when there is a migration crisis. We are not a migration agency. We are a border and coast guard agency. And coast guard dimension also entails the law enforcement at sea, the border surveillance at sea, but also search and rescue when there are cases of distress. So it's a broad mandate, and I think it's important to see the broad scope of the mandate. And everywhere we support the member states because member states are the sovereign authorities they have the primary role for the protection of the external border, but it's a joint uh, responsibility between the European Union and the member states, and Frontex is the operational arm supporting the member states. Member states have the daily command over the operations. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mitarakis, overall, uh, Greece is uh, in a sensitive region, uh, protecting the EU border in, with new challenges. We have challenges uh, one after another. Uh, but in Europe, uh, there is no common policy on migration. We have different views. Uh, Greece is pushing a common policy without internal borders, uh, but there are different views. Uh, what is the balances and what is the views? Uh, what's the differences? What, the, what do you think uh, will lie ahead? First of all, it's important what Mr. Lezeri reminded us and when we talk about border protection, Migration is a small fraction of what we call border protection. We're protecting our borders for military purposes. We're protecting our borders against smuggling, against trafficking, against uh, drugs, weapons, terrorism. There's a lot of risks that we face at the border. And migration is a smaller part, probably, for the safety of the European Union of all these uh, issues. I mean, in Europe, there's a big debate. And I think there's an ideological debate between region and the European left talking about a strict but fair migration policy on the one hand, Europe opening its borders for people in real need and providing all the support these people need, but fighting against smuggling networks. That's the view of the majority of member states. I have to remind you that in Vilnius, 16 member states signed the Vilnius Declaration a few months ago, talking about the need for enhancing protection of the European borders. There are other people that do not think Europe should have borders. We should have uh, millions of arrivals every year. This is not the Greek position, and I don't think that's the position of the European people. I think the European people are in favor of a balanced approach, providing support to those in need. Absolutely, Europe should not be closed. I'm against a closed Europe. Europe should be open to people from all over the world wanting to come and support themselves and the European Union. Absolutely. But we should not allow the smugglers that make three, 4,000 euros per person. When you see a dinghy leaving the east to come to Greek island, the person sending it made 100,000 euros in a few hours. You imagine the strength and impact of these networks, and these networks obviously are not only involved in migration, they're involved in other illegal activities. So this is something Frontex must eradicate, and that should have already been eradicated under the joint statement. So clearly, Every vessel departing Turkey, it's a failure of the European Union to implement the joint statement. And it's important in other paths, like the North uh, Med Africa path, to cooperate better with the Libya Coast Guard and other Coast Guards to prevent illegal departures. But I have to tell you that there is an extreme thinking from some in the European Union, even accusing the Libyan Coast Guard for preventing illegal departures. Not only there are people saying that we should not protect our borders, there are people in Europe that are saying we should make sure the countries on the other side do not protect their borders either. And I think that's extreme views. And when we get extreme views in Europe, this is not a fair, this is worrying a lot. Now, uh, there are repeatedly, uh, Greece is accused for uh, alleged set, uh, pushbacks. And uh, Frontex is, alleged, is uh, accused for covering up the situation. Uh, 
what uh, is it the fair criticism? What is, what is your views about? It? First of all, let me be clear: the word pushback does not exist in legal literature. So when people talk about pushbacks, I'm not sure exactly what they mean. We have two rulings from the European Court of Human Rights, one in the case against Spain and one four days ago in the case against North Macedonia. And the court found that it was full, within the full sovereign rights of these countries to take people that have entered illegally and send them back. This is not what we do, but this is what other countries have done. And the judgment of the European Court of Human Rights found them lawful. So I think it is very important we start agreeing what is allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. Intercepting at sea is not allowed. It's mandatory under European regulation. Preventing illegal entry is ob an obligation under the Schengen Code and under the regulation on Frontex. So yes, we are protecting our borders. We are intercepting and we're not allowing illegal entries into Greece and the European Union. This is something we are obliged to do, and we're doing that. Now, there is some reports that occasionally come out, and many of them have very weak level of evidence. There was a report from uh, some investigating journalist recently made public, and I had promised the European Commissioner, Ilva Johansson, that we will investigate. There is a report from the National Transparency Authority, which I have read, and I've read all the annexes, which says that the videos that they were submitted were tampered, and this is according to the forensic analysis of the Hellenic police, and there was no evidence to support this claim. So we should be extremely cautious of people making unfunded reports, and I remind you again that Greece has, has made people lose hundreds of millions of euros of smuggling money. So I think it's a big business here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Zeri, what is the views of Frontex? What is the, give us a sense. You are there, you have people there, uh, what is happening, really? Well, first of all, uh, I think it's important to have legal clarity about uh, how to implement interception at sea, which is mandatory according to international law, which is also translated into EU law, as uh, uh, Minister Mitaraki said. Uh, they are uh, also at uh, land borders. Uh, they, there is the notion, uh, which is clear in the Schengen Border Code, that crossing of the external borders between the border crossing point is illegal. So the real question, uh, I think, that the, that the real question, apart from what uh, the minister said, that uh, there might be some criminal organizations that might lose money if, if we, we stop their business. But apart from that, uh, I think that the most important, and this is a political question for the, for the EU to, to decide, how to strike the balance between uh, the legal uh, standards saying that only in the border crossing points uh, the border can be legally crossed. And on the other hand, there is, of course, uh, an obligation, a duty, uh, a legal but also a humanitarian duty, to uh, give access to international protection for those who need international protection. But, sorry to interrupt, the, the recent ruling from the European Court of Human Rights insists on the point that you're making. So the, the recent two rulings from the European Court of Human Rights insists on the concept of using the official land border crossing points, especially in the cases like we have in Europe that were not bordering directly, with the exception of Ukraine, war zones. These people coming are not fleeing bomb uh, war in the countries they come from, the last destination. And I need to remind them, sorry for the interruption, and I'll close with that, is that the Geneva Convention, Article 31, talks about people moving directly from where they're at risk to a country where they're safe. Since the Geneva Convention, there have been different interpretations of how this could be interpreted or how that should be progress. But this is not international law. International law is the Geneva Convention, not the interpretation that different groups may have on the articles. The article talks directly, about, clearly, about people moving directly. And this is the case with Ukraine. It's not the case with 99% of arrivals in Greece. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tarakis, uh, Greece overall, uh, according to the Euro many European countries, have done a great, fair job in uh, protecting the borders of the European Union, um, coping with immigration. But there is some criticism about uh, not safeguarding, not protecting the human rights of the migrants. What is your view? 
were absolutely in line with all our obligations under European international law. Our reception centers, the new reception centers, meet the strictest EU standards, the EU AA standards for reception capacity. Our asylum service <coughs> is in line with all European Union averages in the recognition rates, and now we have been able to accelerate the process. New arrivals in Greece get their first decision within one month. Unaccompanied minors are no longer kept at police stations or in camps in the islands, but only in well-managed centers, shelters uh, in the mainland. And with regard to recognized refugees, we give them full access to what we have for the Greek citizens. Sometimes we get criticism from abroad that the total welfare state in Greece is not, is not high enough. This is a consequence of what we had to do to comply with the austerity package of 2010. I remind many of my European colleagues when they comply about the lack of some services, which maybe are available in other EU countries, but are not available in Greece, not for refugees, but are for, for our citizens too. Mr. Vizieri, what do you think about uh, the human rights of mi migrants? Are, are protected in Greece? Well, uh, the role of Frontex is, of course, to make sure that in our action we comply with the, the, the fundamental rights. That's why we have fundamental rights officer and we train uh, the, the border guards uh, and the coast guard officers. And we have, uh, by definition, all an obligation to comply with this. And the member states comply with the fundamental rights as well. I think the, the, what is really important is that within the EU that we have a common legal interpretation because, the, indeed, the European Court of Human Rights, the, the Strasbourg Court, uh, issued clear rulings about Spain and, and some days ago uh, the border to North Macedonia. So what we need, and this was also requested by 16 member states at the level of ministers during the, the Vilnius conference in, in January this year, they want uh, to clarify, to make sure that we have uh, a clarity about what is possible in terms of enforcement of the, uh, the, the border regime and the fact that we cannot simply uh, let everybody in while making sure that those who need international protection can have access. And the example of Ukraine, we started with this is a very good example that when there is a war on the other side of our EU external border, there is no question. It's just easy and obvious that these people, regardless of their nationality, Ukrainians or non-Ukrainians residing or even being illegally uh, present in Ukraine, they are all in need of protection because they are fleeing a war zone. And that's the basics. And we have to let them in. And then we see what is their legal status. But that's so basic at the, at the external border. Mr. Metarkis, finally, uh, a lot of European countries, uh, especially in the north, were, were reluctant to support Greece's policies uh, in migration. What is the mood today and do you need, what do you expect in the future about the, uh, the core of the European countries, Brussels, uh, uh, Germany and the others? I mean, there's a, there are different countries in the EU. There are countries that are of the opinion of a stricter border control and uh, less solidarity. There are countries which are in favor of a more open migration policy and more solidarity. These two strategies have some internal coherency. There are some countries that want Europe to have more open borders, but not to affect them. That's not a fair third option. I think what the EU needs to achieve with a new pact on migration and asylum, we need to find ways to reduce the total irregular arrivals to the European Union and then make sure there is sufficient solidarity and open borders among member states. And I'm exactly on time, I can say. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mitarakis, Mr. Lazari. Thank you so much uh, for the interesting discussion. And thank you uh, all for your participation. Thank you.